factors that affect supply and demand. Before you reach this particular video tutorial, you should have covered how the price of stock is set. And what we talked about in how the price of stock is set is the concept of supply and demand. And we discussed that stock sellers, their willingness to sell and that affect supply and demand. Before you reach this particular video tutorial, you should have covered how the price of stock is set. And what we talked about in how the price of stock is set is the concept of supply and demand. And we discussed that stock sellers, their willingness to sell and at what price represented the supply. And stock buyers, their willingness to buy and at what price represented the demand. And we also discussed that the stock sellers and stock buyers will eventually reach an agreement which will in effect set the stock price or the market price. The thing that that you should be naturally thinking is okay what affects like what gets the the stock buyer to say I want to buy this particular stock and at what price and what gets the stock seller to say, okay, I, I want to sell off this stock that I own. I don't like it anymore. What makes them, what factors affect, factors that affect supply and demand would be financial performance, management, industry performance, social awareness, legal issues, government re regulations, the media. With financial performance, uh, this pretty much includes sales revenue, earnings, debt load, return on assets, return on equity. And if you do not quite understand what return on equity means and return on assets, uh, sales revenue, earnings, we will discuss that in detail in later segments. Uh, the financial statement portion or and, and the financial ratio portion, which will further detail uh, these particular terminologies but for right now understand that financial performance has an effect on the supply and demand which in uh, affects the stock price you also uh, another thing to keep in mind is that you hear this all the time and you probably have never really paid attention to it but now since I'm bringing it uh, to your attention you will hear frequently about different companies announcing or making press releases about their quarterly earnings uh, their third quarter performance fourth quarter performance or you will hear people releasing their annual uh, statements or annual operating reports these usually highlight the financial performance of the particular company which will affect um, stock buyers and stock sellers uh, perception of that particular company which will affect their stock price alright so management when we're talking about management we are referring to the top executives in the company we're talking about the CEOs the CFOs the vice presidents the people that make the major business decisions the major strategy decisions and pretty much direct the way that the company is going to operate if their vision or strategies are not working then the company will lose money this can be where they're, they they overspend for uh, for certain things they can underspend for certain things. They can make bad investment choices. All of this stuff will affect the financial performance of a company, which is basically mismanagement. 
uh, mismanagement could also be there. There are CEOs and CFOs and top executives that intentionally mismanage the company. They use the corporations as their personal p- piggy bank, which will come into the the realm of fraud or unethical business practices. And one thing that 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 I would like you to um, take note of is that as of late a lot of these top executives have been prosecuted for their unethical and fraudulent business practices which is a good thing for individual investors like you and I because when top executives see that hey I will go to jail for life or I'll be in jail for 20 years for doing fraudulent or unethical business practices then that will kind of detour, deter the the those fraudulent and other unethical uh, business activities. Industry performance. When we look at industry performance, we're talking about industries, and a couple examples that I had come up with is the soft drink industry, the restaurant industry the entertainment industry these are all different industries and uh, certain things happen within these industries that change that can change the industry and sometimes it can change it in an adverse way Um, particularly with the development of new technologies some industries with the development of new technologies their industries have became pretty much obsolete you know there's no longer a market for their particular products and services so since there's no longer a market they don't have enough sales to support that particular business so they go out of business Um, a good example of that is look at the evolution of the DVD Uh, before the DVD there was the, the videotape who uses the videotape right now nobody pretty much uses a videotape um this because of this phenomenon that affected a, a lot of industries that affected the people who made video uh, uh, VCRs and it affects people who uh, manufactured uh, manufactured uh, pre-recorded videotapes or or blank videotapes this affected their their uh, businesses because of the evolution of the DVD what about the 8 track the tape cassette look at the typewriter with the 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 technology with the computers, the word processors, nobody uses a typewriter anymore. I don't even think anybody sells typewriters anymore. A, a recent example is dealing with um, look at the video rental industry. Wow, Blockbuster and Hollywood Video were the big boys on the block at one point in time 10, 12, 15 years ago. However, when this red box phenomenon came about, they wiped them out. I don't see any blockbusters or Hollywood videos um, in in the Houston area. I live in Houston, Texas. I don't see any blockbusters or Hollywood videos in our particular. Uh, uh, social awareness involves the effect that a business has on society as a whole. Some products that a company uh, make or manufacturer that could affect the person's health or well-being uh, maybe their manufacturing processes may affect the environment some companies even they, they you know whether they know it or not they may use child labor um, some companies they underpay their employees and because of these different social issues a company can suffer in relation to sales and ultimately their stock price will be affected remember that sales is part of the financial performance of a company and if the financial performance of a company suffers then that will uh, affect the uh, stock price social um, social awareness can affect the sales of a company which will affect the the stock price and this is Walmart is one of the largest companies in the world and yet they struggle to maintain their goodwill. I mean Walmart is under so much scrutiny. I mean 
underpaying employees um, there are even situations where they say that some of the products that they manufacture are made at in factories overseas that use child labor um, there's situations where they're saying that they don't want to give their employees benefits health benefits so Walmart is one of those companies that is under a lot of uh, uh, scrutiny with regard to their social st their social standing and I know of people who do not shop at Walmart because they feel like socially what Walmart does is unacceptable. So social awareness does affect, can affect your company. Legal issues. Legal issues, pretty much they involve lawsuits, settlements, or, and, and they, can, um, they can get you bad press. And if a company is not a mega corporation like a Walmart or Exxon or Philip Morris, a loss a lawsuit can really destroy it. And as a result of legal problems, that can adversely affect the financial performance of a company, thus affecting its stock price. And you're noticing a pattern here that all of these factors that we're mentioning they all result they all come back to financial, okay? They all go back to financial. And, you know, unless you're a mega company like Walmart or Exxon or Philip Morris, a lawsuit can just decimate you. It can destroy you. Uh, you know, a $14 billion lawsuit on a small company, they pretty much can call it a wrap. They're going to have to file Chapter 11 or Chapter 7, liquidate everything they got and try to pay off the lawsuit as much as they can. Um, whereas with Walmart, you, you file a billion dollar lawsuit on them and that's, that's a drop in a bucket to them because they're making a hundred billion dollars. So that, that's nothing to them. Government regulations, uh, government regulations that involves laws passed by the government that can affect a corporation. And we see it, th this, the government regulations is actually prevalent now. It's election year. Uh, our election time and you hear a lot of people talking about government um, hindering business growth and a lot of regulations uh, that are passed or laws that are passed at the local state or federal level can hinder business operations uh, there have been certain instances where local governments have exercised eminent domain to disallow a corporation for building um, in their community and this has particularly happened with Walmart. Um, there are certain communities in the United States that do not want any uh, part of uh, of a Walmart store being brought into their community. Uh, another example would be uh, in 1911, uh, the Supreme Court they ruled that Standard Oil Company, which was founded by uh, John D. Rockefeller. Uh, was a they ruled that it was a monopoly and thereby they they ordered the company to break up into several units and several independent units and then there was a law that was passed called the Sherman Antitrust Act um, to prevent um, any type of up, upstart of a of a Standard Oil um, basically in the United States a business monopoly um, over an industry is illegal and a lot of times when companies decide to come together or merge they have to go through um, they have to get basically government approval before they can actually merge to determine if they are violating uh, the Sherman Antitrust Act so this is another example of how government regulations um, can affect businesses You've, you even saw with uh, Microsoft there was a all right, and lastly, the media. Media plays a major role in how a company is perceived. And basically, without the media, you wouldn't be aware of all of the other factors. You wouldn't be aware of financial performance. You wouldn't be aware of social um, social awareness. You wouldn't be socially aware. Um, you wouldn't know about the different legal issues. 
So the media, which includes television, newspapers, magazines, the radio, the internet, all of these, all of these guys play a major role in how a company is perceived. And one thing that I want to add is that before you make decisions about different companies or make a decision about anything, whether it be politics, do your own research. You know, some of these uh, media outlets may be uh, biased, so to speak, towards a certain um, group or whatever. But make sure that you do your own research so that you can form your own opinion. Don't just rely on what the television uh, is reporting or what the newspapers is reporting. Do your own research. That's just my two cents. All right, and in summary, um, the price of stock is dependent on sellers' willingness to sell and at what price, and the buyer's willingness to buy and at what price. And eventually the seller's price and the buyer's price will equal out. And this price is the market price. The sellers, they represent the supply and the buyers represent the demand. Too many sellers and few buyers equal low market price. Too many buyers and few sellers equal high market price. Supply and demand for a stock are affected by several factors. These factors are financial performance, management, industry performance, social awareness, government regulations, and the media.